This is a GCSE physics video looking at how work is done mechanically or by forces rather than electrically. This comes up in both the energy and forces units of AQA GCSE physics. By the end of this video you should be able to state what is meant by work done, calculate the work done by a force, use the rearranged equation to calculate the distance travelled by an object when work is done and explain what happens when work is done to overcome friction. Work done is just a name for energy in a specific context. Whenever a force displaces an object so it moves it, we say that work has been done and the amount of energy transferred is equal to the work done. So if you can work out how much energy it took to move an object, that's the work done. Work done can be calculated using the second equation on the GCSE Physics Equation Sheet 1. That's the list of 21 equations that you need to memorise because they won't be provided in the exam. The amount of work it takes to move an object increases as the force increases and as the distance moved increases. So we can calculate work done by multiplying these together. Work done being a type of energy is measured in joules, force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in metres. If any of the numbers from the question are not recorded using the standard international or SI units, you need to convert before you complete the calculation. One thing you should be aware of is that in work done questions, very often an object is being lifted. And so the force that will be referred to is the same as the weight of the object. So don't worry if you don't see the word force anywhere in the question, just look for a number that has an N after it for Newtons. Here are some straightforward examples of questions that need the work done equation in order to answer them. The first thing that I'm going to do when I have any kind of physics equation is work out which numbers are which quantities. So here I can see that I have a 700 Newton man and I know that Newtons are the units for forces. So that 700 is going to go where the word force goes and the man is raising his body 0.55 metres doing a chin up and I know that metres are the units for distance. So that 0.55 goes where distance is and then I can see from my equation I need to multiply those together. So 700 multiplied by 0.55 gives me an answer of 385 joules. Pause the video now and have a go at doing the other four on your own. Question two is relatively straightforward because it takes the same format as question one. So again, we've got a force in that we've got a weight with newtons after it and a distance with metres after it. So all I'm going to do is multiply those two together to get 240 joules. Now, question three is a bit trickier because we've got um, a distance that hasn't been given in metres. It's been given in centimetres. So we need to convert that to 0.2 metres. And then also that's only one step and this person is climbing 100 steps. So I now need to multiply that 0.2 by 100 to get 20 metres. And then I'm going to multiply it by the force, same as I did before. So 800 times 20 metres is 16,000 joules. And then question four, we're back to the same format that we had before. So this 50 Newton box multiplied by 1.5 metres overhead is 75 joules. And finally, the wrecking ball multiplied by 12 metres is 84,000 joules. For each one of the 21 physics equations that you memorise, you also need to be able to manipulate it in order to make any of the terms the subject. So let's say we wanted to calculate the distance an object had travelled. Here we have the published equation, work is force times distance, and yes, S is the symbol for distance. Currently, distance isn't on its own, it's multiplied by force. So to remove force from the right hand side, we need to do the inverse operation, we need to divide it. And whatever we do to the right, we have to do to the left. So we're dividing both sides by force. And that makes force disappear from the right hand side and also makes it appear on the left hand side as the denominator of a fraction. So now we have a rearranged equation and we can try to calculate distance. So in this question, we're asked to calculate the distance travelled by a 200 Newton object when 3000 joules of work are done. So distance is going to be work done divided by force. So 3000 divided by 200, which gives me an answer of 15 metres, because of course distance is always measured in metres. Here are five quick questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video and write down some answers. When 4,000 joules of work are done on a 500 Newton object, we do 4,000 divided by 500 to get a distance of 8 metres. Then a 250 Newton object with 8,000 joules of work being done on it will move 32 metres. Our 80 Newton object will move 3 metres. The 65 Newton object will move 40 metres. And the 13 Newton object will move 80 metres.
Finally, we need to talk about frictional forces. And I say here frictional forces and not just friction because it isn't actually just friction. It's also air resistance and potentially water resistance and just any kind of frictional force. So basically, when an object is moved, we need to overcome those forces. We need to overcome that drag. And because of the friction or the air resistance or the water resistance, there will be some transfer of energy by heating. And therefore, the temperature of the object and its surroundings will rise. So if you imagine um, dragging a box along the floor and there's friction between the box and the floor, then once you've finished dragging it, the box will be ever so slightly warmer. And that's it for mechanical work done. But don't forget, there's also electrical work done that you need to think about as well. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found this useful. If you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there are other topics you'd like me to cover, then let me know in the comments.